the Grey Hat Beard podcast. Hello and welcome to part two of show 17 of Grey Hat Beard and we're going to get straight into things as we talk about roadmaps uh, and planning ahead with Microsoft 365, how you know what's being released, how you know what's coming up and then covering some of our, our desires and what we hope is going to come from Ignite and what maybe we think is coming. So uh, we'll get on to that shortly. But first, I'm going to hand over to Al as this was uh, the, your great idea for a show. So um, I, over to you, really, to, to start things off before we interrupt you. You're raising the bar high now. Great ideas. Um, so I guess Ignite is different this year. Um, it's all online. Um, but having attended Ignite for the last, well, quite a few years, one of the things that always strikes me is that there's always anticipation and excitement about what the announcements what announcements are going to be made what new things are going to come and we'll go through some of our expectations um, as to what we want to hear um, but I think one of the things that if you've not really sort of paid attention to all the announcements at Ignite and maybe you haven't followed through on when those things are actually released part of the the frustration that I've always had with Ignite is you get to see all the shiny new stuff. You used to be able to go down to the Microsoft stands and actually see demos of things that are, you know, either in development or just still within the, the Microsoft space and not actually be released. Um, and then you have that challenge of how do you take those announcements? How do you communicate to clients when they're going to be released? How do you get hold of either private previews, um, public previews? You know, what does it actually mean when Microsoft say it will be released in calendar year two next year? What does that actually mean? Does that mean it's going to be the 1st of June? It's going to be ready or does that mean the 31st of December? And well, is it mean, don't promise it to your clients because you're only going to get absolutely. in trouble. Absolutely. And it's it's one of those that you kind of go, what does it even mean when it's released? Does that mean it's generally available? It's released for all clients to be able to use or is it you know a is there a different definition of when it's released and i think this is always something that that you have to kind of take a pinch of salt when you're managing the expectations around when this great stuff is released and i'll give you an example um so i'm doing a session next next week uh for global con 3 um it's on to do but i wanted to have the view in teams of to do and planner that's being updated. I saw it at Ignite last year, November last year in Florida, and I'm still waiting for it to be um, released into the demo tenant that I use. And yeah. it, that's almost a year of waiting, having seen it, having been able to get early access to it, but not being able to actually say to all clients, it's there, it's available now. And that's, that's Thank yeah. It's. I, I think it's great that ignite that they announce what new things things they're working on. You know, we look, look back to SharePoint Spaces. Was it two years ago when they sort of announced this? So, sorry, sorry, what? <laughs> it was Jess Tifa's keynote. You know, it was a it was a big yeah. fanfare. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was a good two years before that that hit, and it's gone live, and kind of everyone's gone. Yeah, it's live, and kind of muttered about it. And I think it it hasn't had the same excitement as it's come out. I think mixed reality has died off a little bit but i like that they announce exciting new things and say that they're working on i think it would be nicer to be a bit clearer around yes these things we're working on we don't really know when it's going to be out i think some things if they say it's going to be out i think there's many times they do say you know it's going to be in this quarter and it misses that slot and people get fed up which is why i think they often don't don't announce things but um it uh, i, I think there it's is, tricky i i don't it, i think it's, oh be, so it, it's screwed you know, I mean, we we know you know delivering projects for clients it's always <laughs> hard to say set a date when something's going to be released and certainly set a date when it's such a big release um and you know gary and i you know we have access to things nda things as mvps so we can give feedback such as such yeah, as um <laughs> ooh, let me think about it for a second beep and beep and beep <laughs> and, they're, and they're really exciting those ones as well yeah, yeah. Um, but you know you've got that, that whole development cycle that microsoft have to go through and then when they actually show it to people you know it go they people get excited they get private previews they get feedback you know they might have changes in terms of the requirements that are going to fundamentally change what they thought was needed 
and so they have to redevelop things. And then they also might have more popularity and have performance things. You know, you think about the scale that any change to Microsoft 365 or Power Platform, Azure, the scale of those changes and the, the performance that they need to test for to get those out there for all of us to actually use, it's a phenomenal challenge. Yeah, I think, um, you know, in terms of the time scale that you, that you just mentioned about the, the tasks, um, one thing which I always look at as well, with Microsoft being, you know, made up of different product groups and you've got elements like Teams where you've got a Teams group, but it connects to all sorts of different services and they are all, they've all got their own product groups, yep. um, is that that announcement could come out but they're relying on other teams to deliver certain bits of functionality for them to be able to then, you know, create new features. And if they slip, what's we sit there going, you what? You're, well, you're doing yeah, what? Yeah. How? Huh? <laughs> so, so an interesting point, and I, I made the point to you, Al, about, oh, well, actually, you know, we, we've talked about the to-do APIs in the past. They got announced yep. at build. Nothing happened. And then they've just now been released and it's it's quite a big gap. And, you know, when I heard it at build, I was like, oh, great. Yeah, we can we can get going with it. But it, it wasn't really released. Yeah. Um, so if, if you're waiting for those APIs so, to come around and. I mean, because because they did release something, it was in preview, but there was, it was like there was no documentation or, or was it it didn't work because there was something that was there. Yeah. Bit of bit of both, I think. Uh, but yeah, there was no documentation. It was released at build, and you could get onto the preview, and there, it was just one blog post, really. Um, but now yeah. it's released, and it's in the graph, and it's, it's got all the documentation, um, and you know things like that. When you start to look in different areas, you can go, oh well, hang on, maybe that had an impact to to this feature. Um, not being released until now, um, which may be the case. It might not be, um, but it, it's having that awareness of of what's happening around Microsoft as well, yeah. um, because it is it is this big beast. It is made up of different um, different segments that all have to work together. Um, yeah. And with with Teams taking off as it has, some of these things slip. You know the the Zoom effect, if we call it that. You know <laughs> the new features of which you know there's loads of features going into Teams that we probably wouldn't even have thought of um, yeah. actually arriving now. Um, so whilst some things have pushed back and Al is kind of, you know, in the painful situation of, well, I want to do a session on it. There's lots of other things coming in its place. Absolutely. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? Priorities change. You know, we all want to be agile and we all want to be able to say, actually, this is a, a higher priority at the moment. But when you've already set expectation about when things are going to be released, that's when the challenge comes. You know, the, when you are saying, I, you know, I've got a client at the moment and I'm thinking, there's a scenario there where Project Oakdale or Dataflex or whatever it's going to be called could be ideal, but I want to get my hands on it. And it's they've planted that seed of, well, this is going to be really cool. This is going to work really well. And it's going to be out by the end of August. And yeah, maybe it'll be out after Ignite, but um, <laughs> that kind of leads into expectations. But, you know, it's it's that, that management of expectations. I want to be able to play with this. I want to be able to test it. I want to then be able to actually use it in anger in a production scenario. If it's going to be generally available in March next year, that, that kind of changes the game plan for me somewhat because I can't Listen, then think about putting it in production. There's an interesting you put in there that I want to play with it and I want to use it in production. You know, there's really two you could almost say three different timelines and and often you may get a date on one of them and not on the others or the yep. different bits there so you may suddenly get the nice version to play with or like cortex there's a preview that you can apply to go in there's some previews that are public and then you go yeah it's exactly what i want when can i use it um yes uh, it's often the answer you get so it's <laughs> It yeah. is tricky. I, I think we, we probably will need to calm down a bit. <laughs> Not, I, I know that the three of us certainly are, are want to jump on the latest things uh, very often because they're great, um, but not always not always the way to do it, unfortunately. No, and I think they're not always the way to do it, but often they are, you know, they're, they're promoting features that we see the value in. And that's the key thing. We see the value, which is why we get excited. We can see how we want to use things. Um, and that's 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 part of the frustration. You're telling us there's something really cool coming along that's going to really work well and solve a, 
a genuine challenge that a client has. I want to use that. I don't want to almost build technical debt because I know something better is coming. Well, and, and that I think is key because I, I know there's some people who say don't announce things until you, you know it's going to work and you can guarantee it's going to be live at this date. I, I'm against that because I want to know what is coming because even if I don't know it's exactly there, you can design things with the view to that happening later. Yeah. You can think about going, yeah, we can do this for now, but let's not commit. There are there are things in Microsoft 365 that don't quite do what people want. Out of the box, we try and use out the box as much as possible as consultants because people have paid a lot of money for those licenses, but there's always exceptions. Now, if you want to build an exception around that that caters for what people want, but you find out that something's coming down the road, then you can kind of go, well, let's let's invest a lot of time into this. Let's invest a little bit of time to keep it going until that comes. You can make those decisions. If you don't know what's coming, you can't. It can be frustrating because you don't know quite how long it's going to be and how much to invest on there. But at least you've got a good idea. Something is coming there and you can you can have a more sensible conversation rather than, yep, we've done this. Oh, something better's just come out. Yeah. It, yeah, it's having that awareness. I think the the one that sticks in my mind at the moment is like you you've got SharePoint lists and you can do the list format input flows on things, and then you've got Microsoft lists. Similar technology, similar kind of. It's, Sorry. Yeah, but but it's the <laughs> thing. But it's the there's elements there that will make things easier in lists. But yeah, you, because you know, okay, this is coming, then you can kind of hold back. But the things that you're yeah. doing now and not having to be completely replaced with a whole different technology stack, there's a path that you can move into, um, which I think is key of thinking. You know, well, you know, where we're going to store the data, whether that's SharePoint or CDS or or anywhere else. It's Absolutely. the yeah. Okay, when we've built it, where's what's its journey going to be like? Um, and you know, uh, looking at all, all those kind of angles, and yeah, I, I agree with you, Kev. I, I want to know what's kind mm. of coming, even if it's a concept and an idea, because we've seen lots of things. You know, we've talked about Mocha at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We don't really know where it's going to fit, but it's good that it's that it's there. We might see something that we've not thought of right now. Actually, yeah, Mocha can fit that. Problem. Yeah. Mm. Actually, now Sorry. it's it's more of a it's more of a thing to get behind, and then you can get you know involved and you know hopefully get involved with the product teams and and give feedback and then try and move it in a direction where you know that it's gonna it's gonna fit um, real world client issues. So yep. we, we've chatted a bit about that. How how do we find out what's what's coming and both what's due to come, what's planned to come? Um, and I, I think it's a really interesting topic. Um, one of our colleagues actually put a show request about how do you keep up to date with the latest? Um, and in a lovely bit of timing, Matt, Matt Wade, the MVP, uh, the creator of the uh, Office 365 um, periodic table, I highly recommend that if you haven't seen it, sort of gives a nice view of what's in Office 365 and how they relate, um, has, has done a great post on resources you should be following to stay up to date with that change cycle. So really nice nine nine points on there now for those that are watching the video you'll notice i've i've started on point nine because I'm, to me uh, certainly as consultants this is where we start the community um the the forums where people have found things out is probably where we pick things up uh, a lot twitter and and i throw in their conferences whether they be virtual or in in person at the moment i think is where a lot of the information comes through Going going up through um, Matt's post, then goes on to the, again the tech community, Microsoft 365 videos on YouTube, attending events. Um, in, interesting one is put on those user voice, which I, I think is an intriguing one. I, I certainly go on there to uh, try and say what I would like to be a feature, and it's interesting if you look at Mike, Microsoft does get driven. I think we've seen Gary, you, you attend a lot of the PMP calls. That certainly the SharePoint engineering team are very highly focused by this. If there's a new feature you want, get it voted on user voice and it will push it a lot more towards the list. So looking at the most voted features may give you an idea on the sort of things that are coming. 
I think then you start to get into the then you get into the timelines. So then you get onto the Microsoft 365 roadmap, uh, a great tool that will give you, for the most part, an indication. The closer it is, the more specific it will be. So it may be mm -hmm. second half of a year, maybe a quarter, maybe in uh, the latter half of the quarter and some slightly more nuance. But let's not give an exact date on there. But it gives you more of a feel for things. Then you get onto the targeted release. Um, so uh, you, you talked Al about some things hip hitting some tenants and not other tenants. You start to see yep. things released via there, and then down to the message center, which is probably the one that will give you the most specific things that something is coming along, or occasionally something has just been released that you didn't know about at all that suddenly come from absolute left wing. Um, usually smaller things. Like the one I saw yesterday that the uh, what was it edit mode for SharePoint lists has been changed to grid view. Um, I forgot which way around, but where you click along that is is due to change. And I think that is just suddenly appearing for some people with very little notification. So yep. uh, I've seen that already and the new the new new button as well next to it. Yep. Um yep. in different tenants. And some tenants are going it's completely no different. But yeah, in <laughs> yep. others you've got right mish mishmash. <laughs> But I, I, yeah. I think it's a great post and summary. I mean, would, would there be anything that either of you would add, add to those ones? Um, on the user voice one, I think it's good if you're tracking it for the, yes, we're looking at this um, kind well, of we'll, statuses as well. That's yeah, good because yeah. then at least you know, okay, something that I am interested in has been picked up by someone from that product group or engineering. Sure. Um, that's good. I think the other one there on user voice, I mean, the, the real value of user voice in this context is not necessarily to know that there are ideas, but actually to know what the highest priority Priorities. ideas. So yeah. it's often, I often will go to user voice to look for things and then go back to a client and go, well, actually that's got a lot of requests in there. So it's more likely to be coming, not coming soon, but coming at some point. Um, from, but the other one is- mind, as Microsoft likes to say. Yeah, but the other one yeah. is working on it. Oh, well, they're actually yeah. working on it. And to just to get, yeah, more insight into the longer term roadmap, because I think when it, you look at the admin sensor, that's immediate impact. You look at the roadmap, that's well, we're we're kind of working on stuff that's kind of got timeline associated with it. User voice is that one level further out. Um, and on that as well, you started with community. What I like doing is getting onto user voice, seeing that something on user voice now promote it. Promote it yeah. in community. Can everybody vote this up? Exactly. Yeah. And I see that more and more. And, and you know, um, I've seen uh, with uh, the recent to do APIs where it's like, OK, you've I think my day is not in there. And it's like, OK, yeah, yeah we need my day. Right. OK. There was Yannick Reitman, uh, another MVP. He posted it out. Yeah, I voted on that. Great get that yep. retweeted, get the thousands of people in your community to to see it. And I'm going to invite that up as well. <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly. And this thing, it's, it's you know, we can help I think, move things along. Yeah, I think yeah. interestingly, there's there's another place that I go as well, which is probably a little controversial. Um, it begins with Y and ends in AMA. Um, so there are there are actually some Yammer groups for. Oh, Yammer, of course. Yeah. Did, did, did you forget about that one? Um, but there are some Yammer groups that are really good. So the security and compliance team have a really good active Yammer group that actually you can ask questions, you can get feedback, um, and they announce a lot of the um, sort of the sessions they're doing, the webinar sessions that they're doing. That my, Microsoft do an awful lot of webinars that they uh, that you can join as a public member um, to actually learn about this stuff, and those are actually quite good. Um, and I tend to post those, you know, within the team as well around what people can actually do to actually learn things. Um, but staying on top of what's coming, those are sometimes where you can get, you know, insight into what these things are being released as well. And, and I think on top of that, I'm just trying to find the link that we'll put in the show notes, but they have a lot of community calls. I mentioned the PMP ones, which really is around the, the sort of SharePoint engineering side. And they're great because you know people like Visa are very candid around. Yeah, we'll work on this. You hear a lot more information from those uh, of what's upcoming. There, there's adaptive cards ones. There's graph ones. Um, so, somewhere there's a list of them. I can't. If you go to the PNP, pnp.github.io, if you look at the the front screen, there's all the community um, events 
that take place, which are PMP, but also Microsoft uh, related as well. So the graph ones yeah, on there, that's adaptive so cards. Um, there. So that's a central place where you can find all of them now. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, coming back to, there's lots of different places to, to find things, you know, Matt's highlighted nine there, there's, you know, uh, recently there was um, a post that I saw where someone was saying, how do I keep up to date as an MVP? And there was about five or six things to, to kind of look at. So <laughs> you have extra, extra things added, but the community is the first place to go because I'll find, you know, all, all you need is someone to post um, an article from, from Microsoft that'll get retweeted. It'll get retweeted throughout the day and you, and you, you will see it. <laughs> you, you mentioned the user voice changing status. Um, I often get emails from ones I'm following. Yep. Usually I've already heard about it because it's come through on Twitter and come through from various community pieces. So uh, yeah. I, I think that's a nice place. But it, if you follow community, you'll often get that. It can be a bit of a fire hose. What you want is maybe something where a, a podcast every two weeks that pulls the most inf interesting sure, news I'll, and information. So uh, although if you listen to this, then you probably already know that. But I think that I think there's so many there's so many different ways to stay in touch with what's taking place. Yeah. But most of the time, it does take you need to be active, and I think that's what the one thing you need to, you actually need to proactively stay on top of things. You can't expect to just have everything spoon fed to you. So knowing what you um, want to learn about and what you want to stay on top of is actually quite quite important. Yeah. That, that, that's what I think. I think get, get it with what is right for you. I think all three of us try and pull as many uh, different sources as possible um, and talk on there. Other people will be more focused on, on doing their day job. Um, yeah. So so work out what's right for you. Work out where you you're not going to get completely spoon fed. Absolutely agree on that. But look for things that are reset, like the podcast, like some of the uh, newsletters. You know, the, yeah. the Office Dev newsletter is a great one. So work out what's right for you as well. You don't yeah. always need to be I, checking the Microsoft community every five minutes for the latest conversations and people complaining on there. Tech community is actually very good at doing monthly digests as well. Yeah. So that's, that's really, true. that's really, you know, having been out for a week preparing for something like this, I'll often go to the monthly digests and see, mm. well, what's actually come out so that I know what I want to look at. Um, and, and you do miss things even yeah. trying to take the fire hose in, you know, things do sneak I, through the net. And I think, thing, you know, coming back to Ignite next week, next week, week after, week after next. Um, or even two, yeah, whenever, <laughs> when it, whenever it might be. Um, what day is it? Yeah, Today? I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, but something like Ignite, there's so much. I mean, it really is a firehouse of information and it's so broad, or at least historically it's been really broad. So having a, a re quick review of Twitter and things like that to see all of the sessions that you may not have actually being able to attend but also being able to understand other areas of technology that you know that are taking place changes that have been Outside announced of your bubble slightly absolutely i mean and that's for me that's part of what i love about ignite you know i'm looking forward to to what they're going to announce around dataflex oakdale wherever that's going to end up um should, should we move on to what we're excited about and what we think's going to happen do you, do you, do you want to carry on with that then now that, that yeah so process. i think i think you know ember oh, sorry having oh. said that one, one thing with ignite and we, we've talked about this before other conferences they release that book of knowledge which is one page yeah. with links you know that highlight summary so when it comes to the big microsoft conferences inspire build ignite look for the book of knowledge as a, a good start yeah. but what do we what yeah, do you what, think and what's coming i i i want to know what to call it the data, the data. It's not. I don't think it's going to be called Dataflex. I don't think they're going to have Project Oakdale as a production name. I, I want. To, I hope. I want to know what to call this new integration with Teams and Power Platform Canvas apps, um, and that relational data store under the hood. That's for me a game changer for how we approach solving specific types of problems. Um, and I think there's going to be a lot around how Power Platform and Teams are coming together in a more integrated joined up kind of way um, and for me that's 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 the main thing i'm expecting that there will also be a lot around security and compliance as well um, i think that's Anything specific or um what i would really like to be see thing. is sensitivity labels to be applied to documents within the direct rest so 
where they are in SharePoint Online teams, being able to say, actually, I want to apply a sensitivity label to, to documents rather than having to open them up and apply it because the sensitivity label sits inside the document. I don't know whether that will happen, but I'd love so that the, to. So the auto labeling uh, doesn't cover ones at rest? The auto, if they're at rest, yeah. the auto labeling will automatically label the document when you have it open. But not without opening it. Do you know oh, you can, realize that? Interesting. You, you need to open the document for the, the label to go in. But where you've where we've had the sensitivity labels recently being able to be applied to a team and to be yeah. able to say we're going to apply and control the team, that doesn't automatically label all of the content within the team. Right. Ooh. It's a good job that I'm not doing a webinar on teams and security. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, so those that that would be something that I'd love to see because I think that that yeah. would. It's not if it's not as advanced as the auto labeling, looking for particular particular elements of content within the document, but it's just saying I'm going to drop this document into this this team, and it's automatically going to be have a sensitivity label applied. That would be that would be brilliant. It'd be interesting to think how you handle kind of modified date and modified buy and version history with that label being applied. So, yeah. Oh, there's, oh, there's all yeah. sorts of questions that. Yeah, tell you what, let, let's let's chat through that with Peter in a couple of weeks' time. I think could be a. Let's remember that one. Yeah, but yes, it's that would be that would be great. But yeah. Hmm. So Gary, this this isn't really your conference coming up, since it's the the non-developer one. But uh, what's uh, what are your thoughts it's on nice Scott developer stuff in it? it? Yeah, it's got to have a Scott Hanson than keynote somewhere. <laughs> That's, That's what I'm looking forward to. I want to see what what amazing stuff he's done in his room uh, after the last one. I love hearing from builds. They, they seem, it seem to be real marmites. People that love those keynotes or hated them so much and refused to watch them. <laughs> so. I, I mean, to be fair, anything with Scott in, it's going to be great, right? He's just it, everything he does is is really good. So, uh, so I'll be definitely looking forward to to anything that Scott's doing. I think he's probably doing another Scott Hanselman and Friends uh, kind of uh, session. So I'll be definitely watching that. Um, yeah. I'm, there's, I guess there's so much um, that could possibly come out at Ignite. Um, I think the one thing is finding out what uh, Jeff Teeper is um, is going to show us with his one more thing, which he's teased. <laughs> what is that? Can you, you know, one more thing? And the, the, what do you think? Each, What's your suspicion? Each word is a different colour as well. It's like, oh, well, there's a bit of a, a teal in there. Does that mean SharePoint? There's a there's purple. Is that Teams? Oh, I have noticed that. So um, just for those who don't know what we're talking about, uh, Jeff Teeper, was it yesterday, uh, tweeted, working on my MS Ignite talk, promise you want to stay to the end, uh, with a little video. And I hadn't noticed that, yeah, there was those three colours. Teams, OneDrive, SharePoint. Yeah, the colours. So, yeah, I wonder what it's going to be. Uh, Hopefully not spaces two. <laughs> <laughs> if it, it is, could, I feel it, really it, bad. <laughs> I mean, this, this is, it, I, I mean, some of the things I'm I'm looking forward to seeing, and I, I know there's been some uh, updates around this. Is the it, was it the flex, uh, sorry fluent UI? Uh, and seeing that apply to SharePoint. So I, I wonder oh. if this is a, a new UI across all of them, maybe seeing them looking a bit similar. I think it certainly felt like Teams is very different to the others. If, if we look at Search, for example, Search, Microsoft Search isn't in Teams yet. Maybe we'll, we'll hear search, some more information Search about that. coming into Teams would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Teams I, I think search I, is pretty poor. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the, um, the, ch the thought of changing interfaces and going through anything that's similar to the uh, the classic versus modern transition scares the pants off me. But uh, I think it would be more like more like Yammer, where actually the it, it it looks a lot better, but you don't have to change all the content. It's just applied to anything. There's not a migration. You know, I think we were promised no more migrations once you went to SharePoint Online. I don't believe that because I'm sure there's going to be classic to modern to ultra modern or something like that at, at some point, but uh, maybe virtual reality or something along there. But uh, yeah, flu fluent UI could be an interesting one. I, I really like that you picked up on those three different colors, Gary. It's, uh, 
intriguing. See, I'm, I'm obviously used to looking at teaser trailers more than you trying to see the, <laughs> the little things. And yeah. um, on, on the fluent stuff, though, that would be interesting because this has been happening for a while, and there's been a few announcements of SharePoint. You know, we've talked about the new button um, changing, and and the, mm. there was a post the other day about how uh, the, the site titles were slightly different and kind of mm. shading and things. So there's things coming into SharePoint. Um, Teal as the default for new sites now. Yeah, but the thing is, it's the you've got the three different systems. So you've got SharePoint using um, the um, was it Fabric, and then going to Fluent, and you've got Teams using Stardust. I think that's what it's called. It's all slightly different, and we've got this situation where those are the first party kind of like um, uh, user interface uh, design languages. What's that going to mean for third party where we've built things using Fabric UI? Are they mm. going to start to look really odd now because everything around it is changing and we spent all this time trying to make it look uh, like it's part of the interface? Um, that If that's some announcements that come out of that, uh, out of Ignite, that's going to smooth that away, then that would be great because uh, mm. I can well, see I that think kind of being a bit of a pain. You, if you were going to make changes to the ui like that you'd also want them being rolled into the power platform for canvas apps as well if that's going to be you know something else that you're embedding into into sharepoint into teams consistency across look and feel that was one of the things that they said that the, the canvas apps would have when they're contextualized with the teams <laughs> oh, they've already said that's coming so uh, yeah they have. Sure, surely that's 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 a done deal now <laughs> So they've said that the look and feel. No, the, the, so when they, at MBAS, when they first talked about the integration with Teams and Canvas apps, they said that they were making sure that the Canvas apps had the same the same visual design language as, as Teams. So whether that's Stardust, I think you said, Gary. Yeah. Um, and I think they're bringing Stardust and Fluent. The aim is to bring those together, isn't it, I believe? I just hope then that Microsoft just say this is the design language yeah. that we're going to fit with um, okay. and this is what we're sticking to um, because there has been a number of changes um, in the year uh, you know over the years and it is painful when that happens um, and, I, and I think what I don't want is them to say yeah we've got one language it's called fluent now for teams there's fluent teams and a, a bit like adaptive cards you have adaptive cards that are the same everywhere but actually there's adaptive cards for teams there's adaptive cards with bot framework for outlook yeah. so i hope if they do that they do do it properly and not uh, the half ass that gets everyone excited and turns out not to be true yeah it could be interesting i, I think for for me i'm just hoping that cortex hits and we get some details what's it going to cost what options are we going to get are there are they going to be different layers that we can apply to different licensing what extras are going to come out from that i think we've seen the new taxonomy center which will all be related to cortex but how how can we start using it i think um it, uh, yeah people have got so excited about that it's started to go a little bit quieter and i think we, we may be expecting another big bang that, that comes from that with some real information about actively using it and possibly what's coming up with it so I, I think we'll probably get something we can use we've talked about that kind of map i think we'll get some timings and then we'll get oh and another thing about cortex is this is what's going to come with it soon as well so mm. i'm hoping we'll hear some interesting stuff about that cortex has been a long time coming as well so yeah. i think that's one of the things that it's it's taken an awful long time to actually materialize and i don't remember do you remember infopedia as a, as yeah. A, yeah yeah and that never actually materialized so hopefully cortex actually we get something tangible this year yeah yeah definitely i think i'd be disappointed if there's no more like i, w I want to see a real usage of it I think in previous sessions that I've seen, it's been very much like screenshotted. Um, it's not been, um, you know, as, as fluid as I'd, as I'd like. I want to see more of an end-to-end -end process um, of what it looks like to, you know, have a document and that go through the cognitive services and then you actually be able to use the the tags um, and see what that looks like on a, on a real page. Um, yeah. Uh, I'd be worried if, if there wasn't lucky, any announcements, put it that I, way. I was lucky to, to see some of that at uh, the, the last ESPC. They had some um, 
product group wanted to sort of test some ideas and, and give feedback and see some of the things there. And uh, I don't think I'll be too rude in saying I could see why it wasn't quite ready yet. There, there were definite areas it worked, absolutely it worked, but it wasn't intuitive. It was quite hard and you needed a lot of guidance. And I think Cortex has to be simple. If it's yeah. complex, people go, no, we could have done this ourselves. So, uh, um, but yeah, really hope something does come from that. That will be yeah. an interesting bit. And we've talked about that before, that that we, we went through all the, you know, the the, prop, the issues of being able to introduce metadata to people. And, you know, this is metadata at scale. Um, it has to be easy. And they don't care. Kind of, they just want things to be easy. So. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you don't want to spend all day curating your documents, do you? And that's where the cognitive services are supposed to then help, right? Um, I just hope that Not yes, about that. it's it's gonna it's gonna come and it's gonna be yep yeah, this is this is useful and it doesn't mean that you throw it through cognitive services and then have to go through everything and just change it anyway. Um, and and it has to be in a way that people can justify the likely high price for it as well. I, there's there's gonna say that's, be yeah. benefit. There's to gonna, it. There's got to be immediate benefit and it's mm. got to be measurable to say actually. The benefit that we get, we can equate this to efficiency yeah. savings or productivity, increased productivity, because I think the cost could be prohibitive for a lot of organisations. I mean, they look at you know migrations and they're already nervous about you know what the impact is when you do a migration. But this kind of activity will hopefully make life a whole lot easier. But it has and to be day, day, day one ease not yeah. day 77. And I'm hoping this will be a carrot to get people to want to migrate, get their all their content. I, I think we're seeing a lot of people moving to Teams, but then leaving their shared drive or going, yeah, that's going to be painful, we'll do that at some point, that this will drive people because it will make things easier. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I'm interested. And anyone else thoughts of thoughts or hopes of what's coming from Ignite? No, OK. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's getting hungry really for lunch. One more thing. I want something that will make me go, oh, ho, 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 I like that. <laughs> That's what I like from a good conference. And and it can be saying uh, to me, uh, people will disagree. But for me, SharePoint space is something a bit different, something I hadn't thought about. May not always be an immediate value for it. Uh, I, that would be nice. But to me, it's not essential. Something I hadn't thought was going to come. Uh, I think be good. Quantum computing was another great example that you were like, oh, oh, oh. Is, I don't think any of us are going to touch that anytime soon. But um, it's something that grabs attention like that would be really good that I hadn't thought about. Free surface duos for everyone would be nice. But... I was going to say some of the hardware might be interesting if they, you know, mm. where they're going with the hardware um, would be interesting. I think especially as I know we were we were briefly talking about this earlier, Kevin, but you know, having worked at home solidly for the last six months, you know, thinking about, you know, will desktop for its return? What is what potentially will change the way we work at home? What hardware could actually come in that might actually change the way we engage? You know, surface books are great, but they're all portable, you know, and for the money, you could get something that sits under the desk a lot cheaper. So yeah, it, that might be an interesting one. That might be a left field thing that might you might see a. Can you imagine a Microsoft desktop come out? That's there is hear it here first. That that's an interesting idea. But isn't oh, that just a Surface or the whole Surface well, the, range? The, 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 <laughs> the studio. Desktops. Yeah, the I mean the Surface Studio is a lovely piece of kit, but. Yeah. Whoa, it's a I was pay for. bit pricey. <laughs> Maybe it's some some hardware that would support the the um the virtual desktop in Azure. That that could be very interesting. So to compete with Ooh. the other ones you get everywhere, that would be exactly what we're saying a cheap one, but you would then for pay for a subscription. Maybe you get the free hardware, but then you're paying for that virtual machine instead. Microsoft thin clients. A thin clients, yeah. That would you hear it here for i'd love oh. it if that turns out to be true that was <laughs> mvps with their, their information ahead of time they're leaking stuff <laughs> oh and by the way if anyone from microsoft is listening and thinks that's a good idea I, we'd, we'd like some credit or at least some early chance to try them out and a Absolutely. surface yeah, test yeah we'll, we'll volunteer to test it certainly. <laughs> but the idea i love that as as thinking yeah. about over time you're thinking yeah that's possible why, why? 
Why couldn't it be? It is. You look at a lot of the, uh, you can get the Surface devices, you basically rent them from Microsoft. There's a lot of enterprise deals where you don't buy your device, you rent it, and it's a subscription service. Now, if actually they're making the money from Azure, maybe similar to Apple, where all the money from the App Store, that's a new model. You've got all the autopilot stuff already. Absolutely. Yeah, you can have you know, a lot of stuff machines configure themselves. If we Intri- intriguing hmm. thoughts. Yeah, it's left me with a. Um, hmm. Yeah, that that that's a that's a that's doable. <laughs> <laughs> can we do a spin-off company? No, no anyway. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's start hardware sure. hacking stuff, hey? <laughs> exactly. Um, I think that's a very nice place to uh, finish up and uh, go back and join the family and help. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> yeah, you stop it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, thank you very much. That was a really interesting conversation. I think uh, so. In two weeks' time, we're going to have Peter on. We're going to talk pre Teams Fest um, about uh, the security and elements there. I'm, I'm pausing because I'm looking at time and trying to work out two weeks' time will be just before or just after Ignite. Just and before. Just before. So may I'm sure we will have some sort of show, whether two weeks after that or whether we decide to do a bonus where we maybe have, uh, as we did with Build, of maybe chatting about what we saw from Ignite, what was interesting and uh, what caught our attention in the little time we, we have to actually look at some of the stuff. But uh, we'll, we'll let you know what we do with that. Um, got some guests we, we're hope to, to get lined up soon that uh, we kind of tentatively talked about, then went away on holiday and forgot about completely. So uh, some people like up that we will hopefully announce on Twitter soon. Otherwise, we'd love to hear from you. What would you like to hear? Go on the website. You can request ideas and things you want us to chat about. If you'd like to appear on the show, we'd love to have you. I'm going to say especially if you're not an MVP, if you're out there wanting to get on the community, you want to get more heard, um, please give us a shout because we'd, we'd love to give people a bit more of a voice um, on there as well. It's not a massive voice at the moment, a growing one, we'd like to say, but uh, we'd love to hear from you and give you that chance to, to go and promote yourself. Otherwise, thank you very much. Uh, that was a lovely chat. Good to have us all back together again. Uh, I've been Grey. I've been Hat. I've been Beard. Thank you very much and speak to you all soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to Grey Hat Beard Podcast. The song Drink Up My Mateys was brought to you by Black Bones under a non-commercial attribution license.